If you grew up in the early 2000s, you may remember one of the candy staples of that era, the Nestle Wonder Ball. This nostalgic gem has been a 90s kid's favorite for its uniqueness and surprise element. However, little people know of the troubled background of this candy. This is Mew is Me 700, today we're looking at something unrelated to my usual vintage Pokemon content, and looking at one of my all-time favorite childhood candies, the Wonder Ball. I've always had a fascination with this candy, some of my earliest YouTube videos are actually me discussing this candy. There's a lot of misinformation online about the history of the Wonder Ball, and I did a ton of archive digging to bring to light the true history of the Nestle Wonder Ball. That being said, let's get started. Manufactured by food giant Nestle, the Wonder Ball was a hollow chocolate ball with candies encased inside. The selling factor of the Wonder Ball was the surprise element that came with it. You could either get a shaped sweet tart candy or spree like candy, as well as a surprise sticker. The Wonder Ball was initially released in the year 2000 with Disney theming, which was the standard branding of the product, including holiday variations such as Valentine's Day and Christmas. Throughout the lifespan of the Wonder Ball, Nestle did other themes such as Pokemon, Cartoon Network, and Pooh Bear. Nestle at one point even released mini Wonder Balls that came individually wrapped in a bulk package of 10. I specifically remember having these as a kid and thinking that they didn't quite taste like the original Wonder Ball. Wonder Balls disappeared from store shelves in the late 2000s, and the very common rumor of the candy's disappearance was that the Wonder Ball was recalled because kids choked on the surprise candy inside. Well, I'm here to blow your mind because that's not exactly what happened. The story actually begins back in 1997, three years before the Wonder Ball as we know it was released. In July of 1997, Nestle announced its newest candy novelty, the Nestle Magic. Nestle Magic! What's inside? Nestle Magic is what's inside the sparkling foil. What's inside the sparkling foil is what's inside the chocolate ball. What's inside the Nestle chocolate is what's inside the ball that pops. What's inside the ball that pops is... Wow! It's Hercules! <gasps> it's Simba, Dalmatians, or Aladdin, all from Disney. They're hidden inside. A surprise in a ball in chocolate and foil what's in a box. What's inside? What's inside? What will you find in your... The Nestle Magic Ball. The Nestle Magic was nothing that had ever been seen on U.S. store shelves. This was a candy that came with a surprise element, a toy inside. Nestle would use its Disney licensing with the launch of the Nestle Magic, featuring 24 collectible Disney characters encased in hollowed-out chocolate candy, with plans to rotate the lineup of surprise characters every six months. Nestle coined their newest product, the Next Schoolyard Phenomena, with plans to have it permanently in their product lineup. That is, until its safety was called into question. Immediately within the product launch, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration warned Nestle that by marketing its combination food toy product, risked agency enforcement action due to the fact that it violated Section 402 D1 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. This act states that a confectionery product is deemed adulterated if it has partially or completely embedded therein a non-nutritive object unless the object has a functional purpose and would not render the product unsafe. Quite the mouthful. This act has been in effect since 1963, and is the reason why the U.S. does not allow the sales of the European classic Kinder Egg, which is a similar product to the Nestle Magic. Nestle argued that it did not violate this act, as the Nestle toy is not embedded in the chocolate, but is encircled by the chocolate ball, and insisted it was safe. Kind of a stretch of an argument if you ask me. Prior to launch, Nestle did have the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission test the product to their standards and had been deemed safe. The toy containing shell is almost two inches in diameter, which is only slightly above CPSC's standards to prevent choking. With pressures from the FDA, Nestle agreed to at least add a label suggesting the product was not for kids under three years old. However, several state attorney generals continued to press Nestle to pull the magic from shelves. The Minnesota attorney general expressed how it's not worth risking even a single child's life or health on this new toy. Obviously, there was a lot of pressure on Nestle at this point, but it only got worse. Candy giant Mars, who makes candies such as M&M's, Snickers, and Twix, expressed how the FDA was failing to enforce their policy on Nestle's product for having a non-edible and side inedible. Mars didn't understand why the FDA had not forced a recall on the Nestle Magic. Mars began to lobby against Nestle and the FDA, who was failing to act, along with the several state attorney generals against the product, and even pediatricians who believed the magic was unsafe for children. At this point, the Nestle Magic had only been out for less than four months and had caused a huge controversy, but Nestle still insisted the product was safe and continued to push to keep it on shelves. However, by October 1997, with Nestle facing aggressive federal and legal backlash, they agreed to pull the Magic from shelves, after only four months post-release. The FDA confirmed that no injuries or deaths had been reported from the Nestle Magic's time on shelves. 
Nestle was forced to pay a $1.5 million settlement with 12 states as a result of the magic due to their deceptive claims in the advertising of the Nestle magic being safe for children and violating states' consumer product laws. So the magic was a huge failure due to the backlash, but this wasn't the end of Nestle's idea of a hollow chocolate ball with a surprise inside. Before the Wonder Ball came to fruition, Nestle created two early test products of the Wonder Ball in 1998. The Armageddon Asteroid, featuring meteorite candy for the film of the same name, and the Nestle Bug Ball, with sweet tart bugs for the movie A Bug's Life. In March 2000, the Wonder Ball we know it was announced and became an extremely successful candy with Nestle, surpassing over 10 million in sales in just 2001 alone. The Nestle Wonder Ball continued to be a staple of the Nestle candy lineup until April 2004, when Nestle sold the Wonder Ball brand to Philadelphia-based candy company Frankfurt Candy, who manufactures various licensed confectionery products. The terms of the agreement were not publicly disclosed, so it's unknown why Nestle chose to sell off their popular creation. With the transfer in ownership, the Wonder Ball could no longer be sold with their Disney branding. With Frankfurt's licensing agreement with Nickelodeon, they released their version of the Wonder Ball under a SpongeBob theme in 2007. From what I recall, these were actually really hard to find on store shelves. I remember only being able to find them at CVS Pharmacy of all places. Frankfurt discontinued the Wonder Ball in 2009 due to Nickelodeon changing their nutritional guidelines that the Wonder Ball no longer met. This is when the Wonder Ball became part of the classic, only 90s kids remember product memes. In 2012, I actually wrote Frankfurt Candy asking them to revive the Wonder Ball, and they responded with a letter that they were in the early planning on bringing it back. Four years later, in 2016, Frankfurt finally did re-release the Wonder Ball under a Minions theme for all 90s kids to rejoice. Since then, Frankfurt has released tons of different themed Wonder Balls, including Mario, Shopkins, Paw Patrol, Dinosaurs, and even managed to snag Disney licensing as a tribute to the original one. They even come with toys now. Not inside the Wonder Ball chocolate, of course. Their commercial is even reminiscent of the original Nestle one. So there you have it. I hope this video will bust all those rumors that Wonder Balls were banned because kids choked to death eating them, because that's far from the truth. It was the Nestle magic that was the big controversy, which there were not even any injuries from. Who knows what the Nestle magic would have become if it wasn't for that stupid FDA law. I would have loved to have seen a Nestle magic with Pokemon figures inside of it. Thanks for watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more vintage Pokemon content, and I will see you guys next time.